you join me today in a car park in the capital of China here in Beijing. We're here to test the most hotly anticipated car of 2021. Rather than doing this review in the car park, I want to take you guys somewhere very, very special. So I actually used to live in Beijing. I lived here for four years and I have a yearning to visit somewhere very, very special to me. We're going to take this car on a bit of an epic road trip to the Great Wall of China. So can this Swiss army knife of family saloons convince this analog dad that this is the digital future? Let's find out. This is the Xpeng P5 and this is fully charged. Don't forget to subscribe and enter to be in the chance to win in our great EV giveaway, where you could win one of four electric cars. So this really is the best way to test this car because it means we have a mix of city driving and then country driving. So on roads in the mountains of Beijing, close to the Great Wall. So we finally made it to the Great Wall, but we're not quite there yet. We've got a short hike to get onto the wall before going any further. So obviously I need to change my shoes. These are not practical hiking shoes. So luckily I've got that in the boot. Now there's a lot of stuff in this boot, but you'll see why a little bit later on when we come back from the hike. finally made it to the top of the Great Wall and what an amazing sight this is. I feel like I should say something quite prophetic but I don't think I need to, just look at the view behind me, it's absolutely stunning. Now when I first came to Beijing in about 2008 we didn't really know anything about pollution, we just thought it was uh, sandstorms from Mongolia but then over time we kind of learned yeah it's actually quite bad for the environment and that's when the government kind of started clearing up the factories, uh, putting in EV incentives in the city as well. And that's why we can now enjoy kind of blue, skate, blue sky days like this. This is mist, this is not pollution. And this is the great thing about cars such as the P5. It makes electric cars much more accessible to the masses. So Beijingers who maybe can only afford an ICE car previously can jump into something like the P5, drive out to the countryside, not contribute to the pollution and enjoy things like this. And that's why cars such as Xiaopeng, Geely, all of the new automakers here in China are onto such a good thing. Now, I'm actually getting a bit peckish after that hike up the wall, so I think we should go and grab a bite for lunch and check out the car in a bit more detail. Ah, oh, and breathe. So we finished our hike. What an amazing hike, absolutely loved it. Now we're back at the car and this is where I wanna show you some of the unique features. So when you finish the hike, there's about three things that you wanna do. One is take off your shoes because they're a bit maybe uncomfortable, so I've done that. The second is part of the Swiss Army knife feature of this car. So if you join me on the inside, I will show you what I mean. Now, often back here, there's an armrest. So there is an armrest with a cup holder, that's fine. However, back here is a fridge. So if we open the fridge, here we are, let's open it there, we have ice cold drinks. Now obviously I don't encourage using these single use plastic bottles, but they are ice cold, which is fantastic. So I can have a nice refreshing drink after my hike. The other is obviously I'm a little bit sweaty. That seat is air conditioned, so that's brilliant for me. I'm gonna get nice and cool as we head out to the farmer's restaurant, so let's go. It's an 
I, I, we don't normally film this, we just film the car. As you can see behind me, we've got the Great Wall, which we conquered this morning. And here we've got the P5 in all of its white glory. Now I just want to talk to you about a few features around the side of this car. So again, here you've got your charging flaps, uh, one on either side, one is fast charging, one is your regular charging. Cameras underneath, hidden here. Another really important feature is up here. So up here, we've got a glass roof, which is lovely and bright for the cabin but there's also solar panels in this roof. Yes, there are some solar panels. They're not very big. There's two on either side and one at the front and one in the middle here. Now they do actually recharge the battery. I think yesterday it got about one kilowatt hour and I think in a day. So not a huge amount by any means. Now the side profile in general, I think is probably the weakest part of the car for me. It looks very generic. It could be a GAC, it could be an MG. It's got five seats on the inside, obviously two in the front, three in the back and you've got our wonderful little fridge in the back as well. And you come around to the boot and you've got your boot button down here. So this doesn't actually have um, kind of the automatic opening. So you press the button in the bumper here, which is a little bit unusual. I thought you'd be pressing it here, but you press it here and then you've got to lift it up. I mean, it's a lot of effort. Now, all of this gubbins in the back comes with the car. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this. It's very messy because there's so much that I need to show you of all these extra bonus features that you can get in this car um, in this 460 litre boot space. So when I first saw this car, I didn't think I really liked the look of it. I thought it was a little bit weedy and a bit generic looking. But when you're actually here in the flesh, I think it looks quite good. It's quite beefy in fact. This front bumper is kind of gives it a more aggressive kind of feeling. However, I would say it feels slightly generic. If you covered up this badge, it could almost be another brand. I don't think they've kind of carried over the design language from the P7 or the G3. I think they've kind of gone in a different direction and maybe made it slightly more generic looking. What does matter though is the technology that's packed into the bumper and around this car. Now I've got to reference my notes because there's a lot of things to remember here. So these are your LiDAR, I've got two of those, one on either side of the bumper. LiDAR, very, very important for the self-driving capabilities of this car. It's got 32 sensors five millimeter wave radars, 12 ultrasonic sensors, 13 cameras, and a partridge in a pear tree. It hasn't really got that last one, but it's got everything packed into this. So much technology for that bargain price or that very affordable price of 160,000 to 230,000 RMB. So we're now on the highway uh, and we're going to test out the highway capabilities of the P5. Now where does the P5 sit? So we've had the G3, that's the car I have, that came out a couple of years ago. That's kind of the mini SUV, kind of Ford Focus sized car. Then they brought out the luxurious speedy P7. And then this one kind of sits above the G3 and below the P7. So it's not quite um, as luxury, but they've stuffed it full of technology, gadgets and gizmos, which is amazing. Now, although I said this was the super saloon from Xiaopeng, it does lack in some areas, but areas I don't think are very important. So for example, it's zero to 60 time, not important. This does it in 7.5 seconds, I think, around about the same as my G3, which is about eight seconds. And it's powered by a 155 uh, kilowatt electric motor gives about 310 newton meters of torque has the three driving modes it's got the eco mode standard mode and sport mode why you need a sport mode in a car like this i have no idea but you have those three modes you have different regen braking you've got low medium high i always put it on high because it you can basically do one pedal driving which is the the great part about this car i do have to say this is a very capable motorway cruiser as an analog uh person this is why I bought the cheapest version of the G3 when I bought it without all the tech features. I just don't feel I'm comfortable enough using it yet or maybe I'm just an analog dad in a digital world. I don't know, but I prefer, I like being engaged in driving. I enjoy driving. So that's why I never really go for these tech features. I know it has it, but when I'm actually driving on a highway like this, it's very, very capable. 
very comfortable and it's very simple to drive. So we've just filled our bellies with our wonderful farmer's food. We've just done our hike. We are feeling very good, but we're also feeling like we need maybe a bit of a lie down or a bit of a nap. So that's where some of the unique features in this boot will come in. So in this boot is basically all of the accessories you can buy from Xiaopeng to uh, make this car a bed. Yes, that's right. It's quite complicated and it's probably gonna take me about 10 minutes, but it's very much like setting up a tent. It also has a projector and a screen. You might just be able to see the projector in there. So if you were really gonna camp overnight, you could sleep in this car and watch TV, be in an air conditioned environment without having to start the engine and be super, super comfortable. So we're just gonna show you how easy it is to set up the beds in the car. Um, so let's get started. Take that off. So I'll press that, jump out. Fully reclined position. Open this up, slot it in the window here. So this is an inflatable mattress. Was this the cover? <laughs> oh God, I think this might be the cover. Right, this is the duvet cover, so that's, that's actually the next step. Aha, this is the mattress. And let me just open the door for you so you can see me struggling. And I need to find the hole. Are you ready? Oh. And I've just let most of the air out stop. I mean, this is a little bit involved, isn't it? I mean, I don't have to bother with this, but I should probably do it properly, shouldn't I? Mum, don't watch. I do know how to make a bed. I think that goes down there. All right. That's the bed done. So let me set up the kind of sheet and the pillows. Now we need to go X play mode. So you've got a projector screen here. Yes, that was also in the boot as well. Put, hook these into your up here. And then pull down the screen like that. Oh no, it's broken. Shoes off. Oh, this is unusual. I'm baking in the sun at the moment. So just plug that in, it's got another cigarette lighter at the back. Give it a minute and it should turn on. So I am now laying down in a car, watching TV on a very comfortable bed. You could actually properly camp in this. It's really, and it's completely climate controlled, even though I'm sweating quite a lot. Now, obviously this is a little bit silly because it does mean you have to fill the boot with all this stuff. But genuinely, if you were gonna go camping and if you have children, they would absolutely love this. I think this is a great idea. What a load of fun. And I'm glad automakers are thinking about how they can make their cars more versatile. What I really think is that perhaps this is gonna be for your Uber or DD drivers uh, who maybe do a long shift and then need a nap at maybe lunchtime or in the afternoon. They can get this all set up. They can get the single bed set up, um, have a nap, maybe watch some TV and then go on driving later in the day. So I think they really think about the versatility of cars and kind of the direction they're going in. And because you don't have to have the engine running for the air conditioning or for anything else like that, it, it doesn't produce any pollution or racket or noise. You can stay in a very comfortable air conditioned environment. Um, what an awesome, awesome idea. And I can't wait to show my son how much fun this could be if we went camping uh, in this car. One thing I do notice about the X-Pen cars, G3, P7, and now the P5 is, is how efficient they are. Now, my G3 does around about 12 or 13 kilowatt hours in good conditions uh, per 100 kilometers. So with a full battery, you know, I'm getting about 450 kilometers from the battery. This has taken the efficiency up a notch slightly. So I think this is even more efficient. Now we've been driving about 80 kilometers an hour uh, for about an hour and we're sipping electricity and we're using 11 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that's what I really like about the, the Xiaopeng cars is how they're actually really beginning to think about this efficiency number because it's great having a massive battery, but if you're wasting it, then what's the point? You're dragging around this big battery for inefficient reasons. Now, a few months ago, Robert and Jack tested the MG5 versus the Porsche Taycan turbo thingy majiggy um, and what Jack said was that the MG5 is the best value electric car in the world right now well I'm afraid to say Jack I think there's a new contender on the block there's a very very high possibility that this will also be going to Europe I don't see why not and to compare this to the MG5 it's like 
chalk and cheese that seems it's so basic the mg5 it's a great car i love it but this is like the mg5 on steroids almost it's so much better it's such a huge leap forward but for a very very similar price point and i assume the price point will be the same if or when this comes to europe maybe next year or the year after and it's what they managed to stuff into this car which impresses me so much so this is a big step up for Xiaopeng, especially for the back seat passengers. As you can see, I have got acres of legroom. Now this front seat is set up for me. I'm six feet tall and I'm six feet tall in the back as well. And I've got so much space, which is really, really surprising. Now they've gone for a soft kind of leather feel in here, uh, which is very different from my G3, which got quite a lot of hard plastics. So they're kind of making this more upmarket move, I think, for, for their following models. I've got a USB slot down there. I've got my heating and cooling, um, pretty standard features now. One thing I don't really like is the brownness. Everything's brown, including brown leather. I think they might tell me it's more bronze, but it looks brown to me. So front seat of the P5, and what do I think? Well, this is definitely a step up from my G3, but also very familiar. Exactly the same steering wheel, except some of the details are in silver. Got the same kind of uh, handle and window buttons and controls are all in the same place. The handbrake, that's all exactly the same. The screen is a lot smarter. It's a little LCD screen here. It does show me exactly the same thing as before. Um, so I can change it between my tire pressure, my kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, also my map, and it shows me which doors are open as well. Uh, it's got the up down lever for the, the drive mode, so reverse is up, D for drive is down, and I've got my park uh, there as well. I actually think the driving position is pretty good. I was expecting this to be uh, a little bit low and I think a little bit um, uncomfortable, but in actual fact, um, I've got quite a lot of visibility, apart from I don't have that huge uh, glass uh, roof like I do in the G3. Now, another really cool feature, like I mentioned before, is the fragrance. So there's a setting on the screen called fragrance. Now the fragrance capsules are actually here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of like a, a James Bond kind of, uh, someone putting the last detail into the atomic reactor and then, and then everything blows up. But I think that's quite cool. You can choose from different fragrances. Obviously you can buy different fragrances as well. Quite a nice gimmick. Um, and I think most of the cars come with that. I've got my self charge, uh, my charger down here for my phone and my cigarette lighter charger in here with quite a lot of space as well. And that's where we plugged in um, the, for the blow up bed earlier. In terms of the UI, there's not actually that much different, um, but there's two features or three features I want to talk about. So one is that solar roof. So in this kind of smart space, I can track exactly how much energy we're getting from the sun right now. So if I click on solar roof, it's telling me about 20 watts um, of, uh, is being drawn into the car at the moment. And today we've done 0 0.63 kilowatt hours, which is not bad. And we've saved 504 grams of uh, CO2. I think that is, it says G. Um, so that's quite a nice feature. Uh, then the freezer, I can control the freezer in here. Currently the freezer is at seven degrees. I can put it at six degrees, zero degrees or minus six. You can actually freeze stuff. And then you can change the settings depending on if you want it on for 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours as well. So if you're going camping, you can keep it on for longer. One last thing I want to tell you about is the speakers. So it's got a very fancy speaker system here. I think it's the valet. I don't know how to pronounce that. But when you get in the car, there's these two speakers here. They're normally into the dashboard, but when you get in, they raise up as, in, as if they're welcoming you to the car. Again, a bit of a silly gimmick, but quite fun. I fully came into this review expecting not really to like the P5, I have to be honest. I'm quite an analog guy and with my G3 uh, from Xiaopeng, it's kind of a, quite an analog EV experience. There's not much technology because I went for the most basic version. But the P5 has shown me this technology is actually pretty useful and really cool. They've got LiDAR, they've got fragrances, they've got cinema screens, they've got beds. It's all in this package and all for such an amazing price as well. Starting at 160,000 RMB for the most basic version, going up to 230,000 RMB for 
this one with everything and 600 kilometers of any DC range. It's just mind blowing. And that's really gonna put pressure on the manufacturers such as MG who have a more analog EV in the UK. This is set to become the new best value money can buy EV in the world, I think very, very soon. I think it's also gonna be a tremendous sales success, hopefully in China and perhaps even overseas. They've sent the G3 and the P7 overseas. I would expect this to go overseas at some point as well. How they fit all this tech into this package for that price, I don't know, but I am pretty blown away by it. And even the looks have grown on me over the last few days as well. I didn't really like the look of it at the beginning. Now I quite like it, even though it's slightly generic. So that's all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video from the Great Wall in Beijing. Uh, we've really enjoyed doing this sort of video. So please let us know if you'd like to see more like this in the future. We have our Patreon memberships, YouTube memberships, and our subscribe button around this video. And finally, if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that episode, you're going to love this one. And this one, too, is very relevant to the topic. And also, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged, which is a wonderful thing to do, really helps us, costs you nothing, you just click up there. It's really simple. And if you do want to support us a little bit more, you can have a look at the Patreon link. That's up there. Thank you.